Praise be unto God. What a privilege for me once again to stand with the Word of God this morning with all of you and speak to and address to you the thing that God has laid on my heart. As the pastor informed me several weeks ago that he would be traveling and then I need to get prepared for messages, my heart started to beat. I said, Lord, what is it that you want me to speak? It's not because I don't, I, I'm pretty confident that God will speak to us. But I, I'm always aware that Pastor Jacob Matthew has been ministering from this pulpit for 17 years. And I'm pretty sure he's covered several books, if not all the books of this Bible by now. So, so, and I know I'm sit, standing in front of an audience that takes good notes. Uh, I... I've heard, I think I've heard some of you say that, yes, if you uh, repeat a sermon, we'll tell you exactly when you preach it the first time. You know, my response to that is the reason why God is asking us to preach the second time because you didn't listen the first time. So if you come to me and say, Pastor, you've already preached it, I will tell you that exact message. Well, it's for you again. But the Word of God is always precious. It's always valuable from cover to cover, as one pastor said, from the index to the maps in your Bible, it's a believable book. And this morning, I want to turn your attention to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 4. Avartana pustagam, ara madhyayam, alina nalam vakya namakunna vaikyam. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Israel e kelkua. Ehova namude. Deva magunu. Ehova egantane. Now sometimes we look at the Old Testament and we see it's so much difficult things to learn the names, the genealogies, the kings, the histories. We're like, you know what? I'll just focus on the Psalms and the New Testament. We often do that because it's an easy thing to do. But the foundation of the Old Testament can be found in the first five books that's often referred to as the Torah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's the foundational aspect of the Old Testament. Now within those five books, this book, the book of Deuteronomy, it serves a beautiful purpose. Every book does. What I want to point out to you is that this book provides a summary of all the things that are taking place in the foundational aspect of the Old Testament. In the book of Exodus, we see God giving Moses the Ten Commandments. You see the book of Deuteronomy repeating that. You see God giving Leviticus. In the book of Leviticus, you see God giving the laws and the precepts and, and statutes. You see the book of Deuteronomy repeating that. So Deuteronomy encapsulates what the foundation of the Old Testament is and gives it to us in this book. But if you take it even a narrower step further down. This chapter is the nucleus of the Old Testament, I would say. It's the nucleus. Why? When you read the first nine verses, you see how much God loves His people and how much God wants His people to know who God is. In the first nine verses is the soul of what I would say the Torah is or the first five books. So let's come back to the verse that we just read. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4. Here, the Moses... Has, having received the Ten Commandments, Moses writes down the declaration that is God's own words. Moses is saying, Israelites, God told me to say something to all of you, and that is God, Jehovah God is our God, and He is one. This is a missed message of the modern Christianity. People are doubting, is God one or more than one? God the Father, 
God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God. That, that principle of God, that aspect of God has now changed in from the New Testament to the, I mean, from the Old Testament to the end of the Bible. That phrase, that concept can be found and it is true. And Moses says, Israelites, I have learned one thing from our holy God, that he is our God and that he is one. So what should we do with this knowledge? Go back to the beginning of the chapter. Chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Now, this is the commandment, these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. Even if we cross into a land flowing with milk and honey, we're still obligated, we're still required. God expects us to follow the precepts and the statutes that God has laid out. Just because you have some blessings, just because you have some cars, just because you have some houses, just because you have some education, doesn't excuse you from obeying what the Lord God has said. God is saying, you're about to enter into the promised land. You have traveled 40 years. You have struggled. There's been rain. There's been storms. There's been heat. There's been hunger. You've gone through all these experiences. Your journey is about to end and become more comfortable. But when you become more comfortable, you still have an obligation. When you become more comfortable, you still are required to do this. When you, still, when you become more comfortable, you must still know one thing, and that is the precepts and the statutes of the Holy God. It will never move us from the obligation and the requirement of worshiping and obeying God. The culture of the land that we're going in should not change our obedience to the commandments and the statutes of God. The luxuries and the conveniences that we experience should not change our obedience to the word of God. Our comforts that we enjoy should not change our obedience to the word of God. And more importantly, the challenges that we face should not change our obedience to the word of God. Last night, during the English service, Rebecca was part of the team that was leading the song. She said something that I thought about almost the whole night. She said, when it's the hardest to pray, pray the hardest. Don't let the challenges become a barrier in your obedience to the word of God. Don't, be the, don't let the comfort become a barrier to the obedience to the word of God. So Lord God tells Moses, tell my people, just because your travel is ending, just because your travail is ending, just because your journey is ending, just because your walking is ending, and you're about to walk into and sit on a couch, don't stop. You're still required to obey the word of God. The Moses said, you, are, you are, must observe them in the land which you are crossing over. Jehovah Egenan. Second thing, so I want to say there is the place that we're in, the lifestyle that we live in should not stop us from obeying the word of God. The second thing that Moses says in verse 2, that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all of his statutes and his commandments which I command you all and you and your son 
and your grandson all the days of your life that your days may be prolonged. Tandamudu Deva Moshudu Paranya Vishayam. Adiyam Paranya Ningal Pogunna Sthalath Ningal Kuru Uru Uttravatham Unda. You have a responsibility in the new place that you're entering. Second thing God tells Moses is, the time that you have should not stop you from praising God. Avada parayinu, ningada aishkala mokkeim. Ningada aishinda avasana mari ningala endu jeenam. Devathinne kalpinakale. You must obey the word of God, the statutes of God, the priests of God, not when you feel like it. Not when you retire from your workplace. Not when you seem to have more time now. No, from the moment you understand, the moment you accept who the Holy God is, from that moment until your last breath, you must obey the word of God. The time doesn't stand as a barrier in us obeying the word of God. Every moment that we breathe, every breath that we take, we must have a desire that says, Lord, am I being obedient to the Lord God and what he has asked me to do? Are you Every breath should be an echo of our obedience. When time is spent in our personal interest, we must still obey the word of God. As a teenager, you may say, you know what? I will come to the Lord at some point later in my life. I was talking to a pastor in Dallas before I moved here. A young man came to him and said, it was sort of a, um, sort of a counseling session, a small discussion, Q&A going on and during the break time. This young man comes to the pastor and says, Pastor, I'm only 18. You know what? I'm going to enjoy my life. I want to see what all is out there. And about the age of 40, I'll come back to the Lord. And the Lord is going to be a good thing. If you are walking, you are going to be a good you must obey the word and the commandments of God until the very end. Teenagers don't have an excuse. Whether we like it or not, we are pretty much born in church, raised in church. And as the pastor said last week, we know who the Lord Jesus is. We know he's our savior. We know he alone is the way to our salvation. We have no excuse when we stand before the holy God. We have this knowledge. So Moses is saying, Israelites, you know who God is. You've learned and experienced God's presence throughout your journey. Now when you go into the promised land, in that place, Every single moment, that time should also be used in obeying the promises of God. Young adults, we don't have an excuse. Older people, we don't have an excuse. We might say, I will follow God later. I only missed a few times. What God expects is completion. Even in the fear of God that our pastor has been teaching us, he said, when you obey the word of God, you must obey it too completion. We must have that mindset. You know what? We might, we, might, we might get better at managing our time. We might get better at having positions in church. We might get more talented in the instruments that we play. We may have socially grown and developed and matured. And perhaps you have the privilege of serving in every position this church has. You could serve in every capacity possible. But if you don't obey the word of God, none of that really matters. Some people think that once I serve in a position, once I do all these things, my chores and my responsibilities, my privileges, all of a sudden I have graduated from the school of obedience. We will never, we should never graduate from the school of obedience. The school of obedience says, until my last breath, I will obey the precepts of God. 
നമ്മൾ ഒരിക്കൽ പോലും ഒരു പ്രായത്തിൻ്റെ ആധിക്യത്തിൽ എത്തിയിട്ട് ഓ ഇനിയും എനിക്ക് അനുസരിക്കേണ്ട ആവശ്യമില്ല ഞാൻ എത്രത്തോളം മനുസരിച്ചു എന്ന് പറയുവാൻ നമുക്ക് അവകാശമില്ല നമ്മുടെ ജീവിതത്തിൻ്റെ അവസാന നിമിഷം വരെ ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ കൽപ്പനകളെ അനുസരിക്കുവാൻ നമ്മൾ ബാധ്യസ്ഥരാണ് വി കെൻ നെവർ ആൻഡ് വി ഷുഡ് നെവർ ഗ്രാജുവേറ്റ് ഫ്രം ദ സ്കൂൾ ഓഫ് ഒബീഡിയൻസ് ഒബീഡിയൻസ് ദ വേർഡ് ഓഫ് ഗാഡ് ഇസ് റിക്വയർഡ് ഓഫ് അസ് എവ്രി സിംഗിൾ ഡേ ദിനം പ്രതി എല്ലാ ദിവസവും നമ്മൾ ദൈവത്തെ അനുസരിക്കുക എന്നുള്ളത് ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ ഒരു ഒരു കാഴ്ചപ്പാടാണ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഹിസ് പെർസ്പെക്റ്റീവ് ആൻഡ് ദ തേർഡ് തിങ് മോസസ് സെസ് ടു ദ ഇസ്രോലൈറ്റ്സ് ഇൻ ദാറ്റ് സെയിം വേഴ്സ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് യു ഷുഡ് ഡു ഓൾ ദീസ് തിങ്സ് ദറ്റ് യു ഫിയർ ദ ലോഡ് നമ്മൾ ഇതെല്ലാം ചെയ്യുന്നതെന്ന് അറിയാമോ നമ്മൾ ദൈവത്തെ ഭയപ്പെടുന്നൊന്ന് കാണിക്കാൻ വേണ്ടിയാണ് holding a position you don't have to fear god most people that hold positions don't fear god it's a sad situation you need some money and a group of friends you can hold a position to preach you don't have to fear god to sing you don't have to fear god but the obedience if you obey the word of god if you value the word of god that is evidence that you fear the holy god നമ്മൾ ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ വചനത്തെ ഭയപ്പെടുന്നുവെങ്കിൽ ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ വചനത്തെ അനുസരിക്കുന്നുവെങ്കിൽ അതിൻ്റെ അർത്ഥം നമുക്ക് യഥാർത്ഥമായ ദൈവഭയമുണ്ടെന്ന് മാത്രമാണ് ഇല്ല എങ്കിലുണ്ടല്ലോ നമുക്ക് ഇഷ്ടമുള്ളപ്പോൾ ഇത് വായിക്കും ഇഷ്ടമില്ലപ്പോൾ ഇത് വായിക്കത്തില്ല ഇഷ്ടമുള്ളത് അനുസരിക്കും ഇഷ്ടമില്ലാത്ത നമ്മൾ അനുസരിക്കത്തില്ല അങ്ങനെ ഒക്കത്തില്ല നമ്മുടെ ആയുസ്സും നമ്മുടെ സമയവും നമ്മൾ താമസിക്കുന്ന സ്ഥലവും എല്ലാം ഒരു കുഴപ്പവും ഇല്ലാതെ ഒരു ഇടർച്ചയും ഇല്ലാതെ ദൈവത്തെ അനുസരിക്കുവാൻ നമുക്കൊരു താല്പര്യമുണ്ടായിരിക്കണം why must we obey with our regard to the place why must we obey with our regard to the time because then and only then are you demonstrating that you live a life in the fear of god itra ellam paranjittu after having said all this obey the precepts regardless of time place show that you fear god after having said all this moses then tells the israelites hero israel The Lord, your God, is our God. He is one. You know, for the Jewish people, this is an extremely familiar verse. Twice a day they pray. Every time they pray, they recite these verses. They recite these verses and, and then they say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. That's not the only thing. they take they write these verses down put it in a box and they'll tie it around their hands some people will tie it around their foreheads and they hold this and walk along carrying these verses which they recite often so for them this is a very familiar passage not only that adu mathram alla avare konjungale vilichirthi kochumakale vilichirthi they call their sons and daughters together they call their grandkids together they sit all together and then they tell their kids and grandkids children hear this our god the lord jehovah is our god he is one they're not asking what did you eat at lunch today how was school today maybe that all comes but when they get together they have one thing to tell the kids and the grandkids that is people child my son my daughter i want to tell you i want you to know that jehovah is our god and he's the only one that is our god we should have that confidence we should have that same mindset as we are spend time in our families together I look at the Bible and I see Joshua saying as for me and my house we will serve the Lord. Yoshua parayil nanu minne kudumbammo. Njangal Yehovah sevikkum. Njan parayte namukku etra perku adu bhagya aa oru padavi undu bhagyam undu. I say with pain because I I have kids. They're good kids sometimes they make the bad decisions. But one thing that I told them is I don't care who you become or what you do. That's all between you and God. but one thing that i ask and one thing that i pray for them is lord ra- let them be raised up let them live every single day in the fear of the holy god that is my one prayer topic as i pray for my three kids and for all the young people here that i have had the privilege to come to know and build relationships with 
You, when I pray for you, that is my exact prayer for all of you. Lord, I don't care what they become. That's between them and God. God, you have planted desires in their heart. You, have, you will show them the way. You will guide them. You will lead them. But God, I have one desire that each and every one of them will grow up in the fear of God and they will live in the fear of God every single day. People of God, Lord Jehovah is my God. And I want the families to say, and as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I want our families to have that privilege. Nampaknya kurang ke, ah, uru padavi unda aganam, ah, uru ane kira padavi unda aganam, anggini ane kengil, nampaknya nampaknya kurang mengan dah sambawi kene kengil, ini sabayil karan tu beri mbor, ini berak karan beri dah, semua wkti galam daya faya doa ane karan tu beri nada. If we have that privilege to say yes, me and my family. We serve the Lord, not out of obligation, not because we go to a church, not because I was born in a Christian family, because individually we fear the Holy God, we give Him respect, we give Him honor, and out of that sentiment, O oh God, we worship you as a family. And that those families come together, I will tell you, just as we sang today, when those families come together who fear God, this will be a house of miracles. They would take fire put in the Kudamangal Orimich, very more. E. Aleem, Edathamai, or Alpud Ale, my marm. They would in the property with a Kanu and Sadikim, Roga Sauking and Kanu and Sadikim. They would make a good week and put in the Kanu and Sadikim. When does that happen? When we come in the fear of God. The ultimate purpose of our life, as Solomon said, is fear the Lord. I'm not a Jew in the Etum Malu Deshamandana. They would take fire put a this verse, this passage is often referred to as Shamea in Hebrew. Shamea means listen, come, and pay attention. Calling everybody's attention to this concept. In English, all it says is here, O Israel. But in reality, the word here. In the root word captures much deeper meanings. The word here, the first meaning of it is to listen with attention. That's the first meaning of that word. In English, it's a very simple word here. We often have this, we often have this uh, demeanor, right? We hear things that we're not supposed to hear, and we don't hear things that we're supposed to hear. This happens between Sunni and I all the time. I'll give a prime example. Yesterday morning, she gave me a task. And I had four or five things to do on that. I said, okay, I'll, I'll get it done. So I got the first two or three things done. I went down to get a glass of water. I told Sunni, okay, these two things are done. She said, okay. And she was busy cooking and cleaning and all the different things. I went back up. I was preparing for the Saturday night service and um, I, w I read the Bible, prayed, took some notes and sitting there. And then I went, down, went back down. It was almost lunchtime. I said, okay, now all of it is done. I have to get back on certain things, but almost all of it's done. Then about seven o'clock, so we're driving to church in the car. She says, did you do all the things that I told you to do? I said, wait a minute, what happened? I told you twice that I was, it was taken care of. But she had to ask me again a third time. So I asked the question, did you hear what I said? So right? we all have listening ability, but there's a big difference. She's, she's a good listener, okay? I need to go home this afternoon. <laughs> we all have the ability to listen. There's a big difference between listening and listening with attention. It's a big change there. One, to listen intently. To listen with attention means your mind and your heart is in the place. Right? 
ഉൾപ്പെട്ടിരിക്കുന്നു നമ്മുടെ മനസ്സും ആ പ്രവൃത്തിയിൽ ഉൾപ്പെട്ടിരിക്കുന്നു when we come to the word of god when god speaks to us when you read the word of god what happens is we're often very distracted true or not we're often very distracted i was in a meeting and a pastor said everybody who's sleeping raise your hand and say hallelujah three people did kanna parijayavai it's a routine right because all you hear is the last part say hallelujah endina parayunna ariyathilla if anybody is going to hell praise say praise the lord thankfully nobody did listening with attention is a much different skill and desire than simply hearing what somebody is saying so moses is telling the israelites here i want you to listen with attention i want you to listen with intention when god is speaking we must have that desire lord when you speak to me when i read the word of god when you speak to me in sunday school when you speak to me on wednesday night bible study or friday service lord doesn't matter when you speak to me god i want to be able to listen attentively with all of my being involved in the listening in the listening process we must realize it's not an ordinary person speaking nammal bible vaaikkum undallo nammal manasaakkanam idu oru verum book oh pusthakam oh novel onnum alla idu devathinte vajanamaanu this is the word of a holy god that makes this a holy word as a result when you pick this up we must have the reverence to say god i don't want anything else to distract me i want to be able to listen attentively to what the lord god is telling me nowadays the psychologists and scientists all saying our our uh, attention span is about 60 seconds നമ്മുടെ ശ്രദ്ധയുടെ ആ കാലാവധി ഏകദേശം ഒരു ഒരു മിനിറ്റാണ് ഐ ബിൻ സ്പീക്കിംഗ് ഫോർ ട്വൻറ്റി സെവൻ മിനിറ്റ്സ് ഇൻ ദിസ് ട്വൻറ്റി സെവൻ മിനിറ്റ്സ് ഹൗ മെനി പീപ്പിൾ ഡോസ് ഡാഫ് ഹൗ മെനി പീപ്പിൾ വെൻ ടു ചിക്ക് ഫുൾ ഏസ് മെനി ആൻഡ് ഹൗ മെനി പീപ്പിൾ മെസ്സേജ് സംബഡി ഹൗസ് സേ വാട്ട്സ് ഫോർ ലഞ്ച് ഹു നോസ് വി ഗെറ്റ് ഓഫ്റ്റൻ ഡിസ്ട്രാക്റ്റഡ് ടു ഈസിലി because we're so good at multitasking nowadays but you know what though when it comes to the word of god there must be no multitasking when it comes to the voice of god there must be no multitasking when you when you listen to the instructions of god there must be no multitasking the lord says you want to hear from me you must do so with attention you must do so with intentionality otherwise i'm not competing for your attention God is not a toy that says I will spend some time with you and you go do what you want no God says if you want me to speak to you I certainly will but can you come to me without any distraction Can you come to me with your full attention then I will speak to you When it comes to the word of God don't read it for entertainment because this is not what that's for one we must realize that this word of god in our hand is a privilege nammal manasilakkanam nammade kayil oru devathinte vajanam undengil adu etthom valiya oru padaviyana now when we were in uganda joshua had taken some bibles to uganda and we handed off at different places at, at one place we ran out of the bible a young person comes running to joshua and said sir please can i have a bible sir please can i have a bible young person and Joshua said are you sure you're going to read it he said yes i will read it i will read it can i have a bible please do you have one more that you can give to me namukku etra perka aagraham undu bible devathinte vadathode how many of us have that same value for the word of god here's a young person saying i don't have one and nobody's given us one we don't have access to one can you please give me a bible and he was begging with joshua for about 2 to 3 minutes asking in this conversation uh, we must realize we have a great privilege we can learn and read the bible in any language that we want and many of us have six seven bibles at our disposal lille ningada bedroom il or bible undu living room il or bible undu teepol or bible undu car il or bible undu chellu charchi vittu pona pinne i'll show you they're in the back in that corner 
got about six, seven Bibles. We have this word of God. It is a privilege. Second, we must realize this word of God is a holy word of God. Third, we must realize that this word changes our life. No other book in this world can transform the life of any person, but this book has transformed thousands and thousands of people's lives. And this morning, I'm here to tell you, if you pay attention to this Word of God, if you listen with intentionality, this Word of God, when you read it, will change your life. My dad was, when he was preaching in, in when he was pastoring in, in Kerala, he came across the testimony of a person that came to church. Extremely brilliant, scholarly person. And he was reading the Bible. You know what changed him from becoming, from, uh, from changing from being an atheist to a believer in Christ? He read Matthew chapter 1. It's all the genealogy of Christ. No one, no one I know became saved because they read the genealogy of Christ. But the scholarly man said, I read that chapter and I was reading through it and in that every, it says, so and so begat so and so. So and so begat so and so. Inna, inna vekti, inna are jenipichu, jenipichu, jenipichu. Angan and you read and read it and all of a sudden when it comes to Christ it says, jenichu. He was born. That one word made him think, how come Christ wasn't begotten, but he was born? That one word changed a man's life. He went from going into eternal hell and coming into eternal salvation. People of God, there is not a single word in this book that cannot change our life. If we pay attention, every aspect of this word of God will change our situation and change our life. We must realize we should do so with intentionality. This word of God simply doesn't change life, but it can bring about life from nothing. That same word spoken to us will create in us that which we didn't even know existed. Maybe you're struggling with certain decisions. And you don't have the discernment to go and do the right thing. You don't know what steps to take. You don't know what path to follow. I'm telling you, pick up this word of God. Pick up this word of God. Put everything else aside and read it and say, Lord, speak to me through these words. Nothing else matters at this point. When I told my kids, when you go into your, your personal prayer time, make sure your phone is as far away as you can put it. And if you want to tell us you're going to pray that you're not distracted, you're not disturbed, then do that. I do that. When I go to the prayer closet, my phone, nothing is there. My Bible and me and God. That's it. I'm not saying that I'm a high and lofty, mighty person. No. I have learned throughout my life, through failures and challenges, the more intimate that I become with the Word of God, the more intentionality that I have with the Word of God, the more I understand how wretched I am, and the more I understand how I have a Father, I have a Maker, I have somebody who knows me, I have someone who knows my weakness, I have someone who knows my tears, I have someone who knows my struggles, I see I know someone who knows my pain, I know who that God is, the more I spend time in this Word. Nothing else in this world compares to this word of God. Oftentimes we come to church, we are very bound by the clock. Right? 12.31, you move this way a little bit. 12.32, you move this way. And if you're sitting at the edge of the pew, 12.33, your one foot is out the pew. But can I tell you something? When you sit in the presence of God, and, and it's you and just God, time doesn't become a problem. 
Yes, we have to limit ourselves because we have things to do. People have to go to work and different things have to take place. I'm not criticizing that. I'm saying when you make personal time in the presence of God and you take this word of God and you read it, time doesn't become an issue. You don't have to worry about locking up the church. You don't have to worry about getting a car ride home. You don't have to worry about holding somebody else up in the parking lot. No, you're spending time with the Holy God in your prayer closet. I'm telling you, have, it, have that time spent with great intentionality and great attention. So the first meaning of the word here is to say, I will listen attentively. There's a second meaning to this word here. It means to give consent or that I agree. Kelkan Barembol, Nyani Kelkan Vishengetil, Yeniki Yoji Ponder, Nan Samadikinu, Nan Angirikinu, Enungudiana, Avak in the Artham. All of us, almost all of you have a cell phone. When you set up your cell phone for the first time and you start it up and you open the screen, about the second step, there's a long document that comes up. You know what it's called? What's it called? Terms and conditions. Terms of agreement. Okay. Now, you have to do something to move past that screen. What do you have to do? What do you have to do? I agree. How many of you read what, what was written there? You probably change phones 10 times, maybe 15 times. I guarantee you not a single one of us has read 10 lines of that page. But what do we do? Scroll down, I agree. Now if something happens to your device and you take it back to the manufacturer and say, this is not working, this is what happened, they'll say, did you read the terms? This is not covered. Whose fault is it? Our fault or the manufacturer's fault? It's our fault. They're like, hey, you didn't read it, but you hit it. You, you hit, I agree. You consented to what was written there. There's a very famous shopping app. I'm not going to say the name. But if you read the terms and agreements of that, that app says the moment you sign up on our app, we have access to every device in your, in your Wi-Fi network. We are not even aware of what we're signing up to, agreeing to, consenting to. But when it comes to the Word of God, we can't play games. Moses is saying, one, you listen attentively. Two, your hearing also includes the fact that you agree to what you just heard. Israel has heard the statement, the Lord our God is one. And Moses is asking, do you understand what that means? Moses is asking the Israelites, do you agree with what that said? What the Israelites should respond with is yes. We agree, our God is the only one and there is no one else. We must have that confidence and there should be no doubt, no confusion in the agreement that we have with that statement. And now there's a third meaning to this word. The third meaning is there's a call to obedience. You heard what Moses said. You heard it intently. You agreed with Moses said. Yes, we agree with him purposefully. But has that resulted in your obedience in your life? What is it that we heard? The Lord our God is one. The Lord our God is God. Are 
Anybody have any opposition to the fact that we serve one God? Because there are people in the Christian circles who say that we have three gods. And the scripture vehemently opposes that. It denies that. He said, the scripture says we serve one God. There is definitely God the Father. There is definitely God the Spirit. There is definitely God the Son. But all of them together, God is one. And there's no doubt in my life and there's no doubt in my mind as a result. And from Genesis to Revelation, we see the triune God working in perfect harmony. There's never a point in which each one of those personalities goes a different direction. They all work hand in hand. At the same time, our God is one. That's a foundational truth that we must know. Second, our God, this one God, is an infinite God. Third, our God is an unchanging God. Four, our God must be worshipped. Five, our God must be obeyed. We as Christians must appreciate the fact that our God is one God. The second meaning of the word Jehovah is our God. He is one is that there is no one else. The Israelites are living in the midst of people who serve thousands of gods. Thousands of idols. Thousands of worship rituals. Thousands of things going on in terms of God. And all these things are happening. And in the midst of that, as God places the people, He says, you must know that you only have one God. Second, in the time and the space that we're living in now, you know, there are people who worship trees. There are people who worship the skies. There are worship people who worship snakes. There are people who worship different, different things every single day. And we live in the midst of all that. In, the, in living these times, living in these situations, we must have the confidence, you know what? There is no other God. There's only one true God. There's only one living God. There's only one holy God. There's only one creator God. There's only one God who is worthy of worship. That is a God that I know in this word of God. It does not matter what does and who does around us. It doesn't matter what place of worship they go to or what names they use. We must have the confidence to say, yes, my God is one God. When he was talking to the Israelites, when God was speaking to the Israelites, God said, you know, you must know Israelites, I am the one who brought you out of Egypt. We must realize we have been brought out of the slave, being bonded to sin, to slaves to sin, and there's only one God who brought us out, and that is Jehovah God. But what has happened? When I say we have many other gods, what are you thinking about? Idols? I'm not talking about idols. I will tell you we have many other gods in our life. Can we show the slides there? Here's some people's God. Vanity. As makeup, yes. If you spend more time making up before Sunday service than praying for the Sunday service, perhaps that is your God. If you spend more money buying cosmetics than you give to missions, perhaps this is your God. See, we don't have to have idols in our house. We don't have to put up statues in our house. We live with many gods in our life. That for some, that may be. But for some, you're saying, you know what, Pastor? This is natural. What you see is what you get. 
Okay, for some of us, maybe there's a different God. What's next? There you go. Why are you going to India? Why are you going to Kerala? For some, the moment a new style comes out, a new fashion comes out, they have to be the first one to get it. And we think we're not worshiping style and fashion. You're fooling yourself. You have a different God in your life. And you're saying, no, I'm not into shopping. Okay, there's something else that could be a God. For some, food is their God. Even the Bible says, For some, food is absolutely their God. Where's, is Faber here today? She's here. Thursday night Bible study, we were talking about different sins and how we sort of minimize sins and all these things. We were talking about gluttony. And she made a statement that everybody in the, in the, in the classroom agreed with, which was, if you're not able to fast, maybe you're a little gluttonous. Ubawasam edekwan okkud nilla hengil, oru bakshay, we had a 21 day fasting prayer and we have a chain fasting prayer going on until the end of the year I'm asking all of you can you at least for one day preferably a day that you're not working but even if it's during the day that you're working can you spend time fasting or this is your God and it's difficult for you to fast. And for some of you, it's like, Pastor, I fast six out of the seven days. Not a big deal. This is not my God. I only have one God. Maybe I'll, go, I'll show you something else. What's next? There's some people's God. People that value money more than the presence of God, I would tell you, You've changed who your God is. Devate kaatlam sambatte neem panatre nengal ka agriho mundo. Adine vendi endin cheyvan sramikyan nengal ka talpriya mundo. Enne ke jaru urigari chundi kani kiam. Nengal da deva medarth deva malla panavum sambatum nengal deva mai marikar nidi kino. Wealth and the pursuit of wealth and money has become your God. Moshe isal magu do parayiwa. Namu ko rotte deva mai ullu. Moses is telling the Israelites, we only have one God. What have we done in the land flowing with milk and honey, in the land with our mansions and cars and all these things? We have made other things that God has blessed us with into being gods in our life. And we think, no, we don't worship it. I guarantee you, you do worship it. You're not just admitting to it. Is there one more? This is the God of the day. Some people have monuments in their house with devices. TV watch game bloom, iPad and iron on the phone and iron. In the moon, we linger so awesome, but I Difficult to breathe without the TV remote, the gaming device and your iPad and phones. And you're telling me you don't have any other God in your life? You're telling me I only worship the one true living God? You can fool me. But when the Holy God looks at us, he's gonna say, you know what? Your attention was never on me. Your focus was never on me. You rather spend your time and your effort and your energy spending and doing things that you wanted to do. And before you go to bed, you will take five seconds and say, God, thank you, I'm going to bed, good night. And we think we serve one God. Don't deceive yourselves because none of these gods will give you eternal life. 
None of these gods will give you entrance into the kingdom of God. None of these gods will enable you to hear the trumpet sound. None of these gods will enable you to understand what the Lord God wants in your life. I'm asking you this morning, as Moses told Israelites, do we have the confidence to say, Oh God, Jehovah, you alone are my God and only you are my God. Our looks will vanish. Our materials will get used up. Our food becomes unusable. Our money becomes worthless at some point. Our gadgets will make us addicted and be miserable. But if you come into the Word of God, if you come in the presence of God, if you pursue the living God, I am telling you, more than the looks and the money and the materials and the gadgets, your life will become more fulfilled. Because our God gives life into our life. Our God changes the situations in our life. And what has happened? God told Moses, tell the Israelites, I am the God who brought them out of slavery. We brought these other gods in and we've gone back into slavery. We are addicted. We are bonded to these things. When the fasting prayer started, the pastor gave a challenge, mostly to the young people. He said, not just fast from food, can you also spend time fasting from your devices? I used to watch a YouTube show all the time. And the fasting prayer, when the pastor said it, I mean, you know, I'm going to try not to watch it. It worked. I haven't gone back to it. I'll give you a challenge, a small challenge. When you get out of this church this afternoon, and you get in your car, in the car ride from the church parking lot to your home, can you not touch your phone? Some people's hearts are palpitating. Because already, sitting here two hours without looking at your phone has made some people restless. And you're telling me, Pastor, I don't get home for another 45 minutes. You don't want me to touch my phone for another 45 minutes? Yes. Absolutely, I'm telling you not to do it. Instead, do this. Think about what you learned in Sunday school today. Instead, do this. Sing the songs that we sang today. Sing them by yourself in the car. Instead, do this. Read this verse over and over again in your mind. Memorize it during that time home. And when you get home, I guarantee you there will be difference in your life. I guarantee you in the days to come, if you repeat that, there will be differences, there will be changes in your life. People of God, I'm telling you, let's not bring other gods into our heart, into our, into our life, into our mind. Let's put aside all those things and be, have the confidence to say, Jehovah God, you alone hold the throne in my heart. Jehovah God, you alone are the God in my life. Jehovah God, there's no one else who will take your place. Jehovah God, I don't want a single thing in my life. Life, to replace your presence in my life. God paid the price for us to be delivered from the slavery. And we replace that God with all these other things and we become slaves again to the things that we have been blessed with. Hear, O Israel, this morning, the Holy Spirit is telling us, here, IPC Orlando, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Amen. I'll pause there and pick up from there next time because I know I won't be able to finish it. We have to get to the key part of this verse next week as well. This morning, I want you to evaluate your life. Which relationship holds the place of God in your life that should not? Which friend holds a position in your, in your heart that God only should have? Which ambition has become God in your life and kicked God out of a heart? Which desire has replaced God's presence and become God in your life. How many different gods 
are sitting on the throne of your heart. നിങ്ങളുടെ ഹൃദയത്തിന്റെ സിംഹാസനത്തിൽ എത്ര എത്ര കൊച്ചു ദൈവങ്ങളെയാണ് നിങ്ങൾ ആക്കി വെച്ചിരിക്കുന്നത് അവിടെ വേറെ ഒറ്റ ദൈവം ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ യഥാർത്ഥ ദൈവം ആ സിംഹാസനത്തിൽ ഇരിക്കത്തില്ല എന്ന് നമ്മൾ മനസ്സിലാക്കിക്കൊള്ളണം Our God, the Holy God, the Living God, the One Single God, He will not compete for your heart. He will not compete for your heart. Hallelujah. 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 Hall I will read it so that I can agree to what the Lord God is saying. I will read it in a way that that generates and develops fear of the Lord within my life. And that's what our life needs to be and that's who God needs to be within our life. So this morning people of God ask yourself this question. Knowing that none of these other things gives us eternal life. is it still worthwhile for us to hold on to all these other gods instead of the living god yadarthamai jeevikina devathe maati vechittu ee kochu 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 devangale nammude hrudayathil vechu kondu nithya jeevana nashtapaduthna avasthil jeevikkan namukku ippolum manasundo ippolum adaanu nammude aagraham adho innu pagalkalam parayan sadikkum devame enikku vera oru otta devangalum venda ini oru otta aagraham devamagalle ഒരൊറ്റ അഭിലാഷം ദൈവമാകല്ലേ ഒരൊറ്റ അനുഗ്രഹം ദൈവമാകല്ലേ ഒരൊറ്റ വിഷയം ദൈവമാകല്ലേ എൻ്റെ മക്കൾ എൻ്റെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ ദൈവമാകല്ലേ എൻ്റെ എൻ്റെ ആഗ്രഹങ്ങൾ ദൈവമാകല്ലേ എൻ്റെ ജോലി ദൈവമാകല്ലേ കർത്താവേ അതെല്ലാം മാറ്റി വെച്ചിട്ട് യഥാർത്ഥമായി ജീവിക്കുന്ന പരിശുദ്ധ ദൈവം മാത്രം എൻ്റെ ഹൃദയത്തിൽ സിംഹാസം ഇരിക്കണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുവാൻ ആഗ്രഹിക്കുവാൻ തീരുമാനിക്കുവാൻ ആ പ്രാഗൽഭ്യം ഉണ്ടാകുവാൻ ഇന്നീ പകൽക്കാലം എത്ര പേർ ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നു ചവി പ്രേ Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Our heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you God. We thank you Lord that you spoke to us through the word of God. God, you alone are God. There is no one like you. There is no equal, there is no rival. Your name is the name above all names. Oh God you paid the price for us to be delivered from the bondage and slavery and we have allowed other gods to come in and make us slaves again and this morning by the power of the holy spirit lord i pray anyone under the bondage or slavery of any other gods would be broken oh god and the real true living god the holy god would take his rightful place in the heart the throne of every single person's heart this morning help us to be reminded oh god that when we sit before the word of god when we read the word of god when we listen to the word of god that it is not just our ears but there is a desire and a heart and a mind that accompanies our ears to listen intently to listen with attention father help us to know what we're listening to and agree to what is being said and may the fear of god develop and grow in our life on a day to day basis lord as the people of god stretch their hands forward from the blessings that you have provided them and give unto the house of the lord their offerings and tithes i pray that you continue to strengthen them bless them we pray for their businesses their workplaces their sources of income that you would make them be a blessing in all those places thank you lord for the strength the health the abilities and the wisdom that you've given us to carry out our day to day responsibilities from which we earn this income Let it be used for the kingdom of God. May it glorify you. I bless every single person. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.